Hi, Wafa here. I have another career interview for you. Today's guest is Ayush Singhal. He is an associate director at the Business Development Bank of Canada. His career story is fascinating. His motto, getting out of his comfort zone, which led him to immigrate to Canada where he knew no one and had no network. He transitioned from being unemployed in a new country as an immigrant to an associate director. In this interview, he'll share with us his tips to start from scratch anywhere and to get the job you want. This interview can be useful to you, whether you're planning on uprooting your career from one country slash continent to another, or if you're planning to uproot your career from one industry to another and start from scratch there. So keep watching. Ayush, please introduce yourself. Sure, Rafa. Hi, everyone. This is Ayush. I'm originally from India and currently in Canada working as an associate director at BDC Capital, where my role is to cater the financing needs of the mid, uh, small to mid-sized Canadian businesses and help them grow and also like for the succession planning. Prior to BDC Capital, like I was at the same bank, uh, BDC, but in their advisory division. And before that, I was in India, like where I was working in like different roles in the investment banking and also being a consultant the at one of the booty consulting firms and an equity research analyst at a booty investment management firm. Prudential, while like I, I completed my bachelor's in engineering and did my master's in economics and finance from Australia University of Queensland. And recently I completed my MBA from the Ivy Business School in Canada. Outside of work and school, like I always loved like meeting new people and traveling and trekking has always been my passion. And I used to lead tracks, like I used to lead like the groups in the Himalayan ranges. And I love food, like I love eating food and uh, and helping people and guiding them in their career. That's my passion. You've worked in several different countries and continents. Tell us more about what prompted you to give such an international dimension to your career. Like India is my comfort zone, right? It's my home. And when you push yourself out of your comfort zone, that's where like the growth comes. So going to the Australia, like I learned so much because... That was my first time outside India, like without my parents or like without buying a comfortable home, like and everything. I have to cook my own. Like for the first time, I learned like how to boil the eggs, like in Australia, and then working like different jobs, like for several. Because like coming from like a middle class family in India, like you don't get like too much of money, right? Like and you need to support yourself. So I used to like wash the cars, like deliver the newspapers, like uh, tutor like the students in the uni, like just to earn and like support myself and also support my life over there after that like i came back to india and worked there for a while like to gain some experience in the financial industry and then again like i wanted to challenge like after three four years like after every time i feel like my life is getting a bit steady and stable like again like i want to push myself okay then i decided okay like let's go to canada canada like was super super challenging like uh, moving to different countries or different roles is always like I want to push myself to come out of my comfort zone and see like how far I can go. What stands out for me, you know, is that oftentimes for highly qualified professionals, professionals that have had the huge opportunity to get a diploma, whether a bachelor's degree or master's degree, it is very hard to consider stepping out of a linear corporate path, essentially, or a linear career path, and to take a tangent to non-traditional jobs for that profile, if it makes sense. Tell yeah. me more about how you handled that. I do understand why people feel comfortable after the linear progression in their career, because they have been in that place for like years, right? But if you like since very beginning of your life, like if your career is like ups and downs, like you kind of like get used to that volatility, like in your career and your life, like you know how to face the adversities. And secondly, like I always believe you no know, job is big or small. Every experience teaches you something. I know like when I came to Canada, like my first job was like the admin job and everyone around me was like, 
like pro like you're a cfa you are masters and like you have done engineering and like you're doing like they're scanning the documents and like ordering the food and everything and i'm like yeah because first of all this is a role like i don't think like it's a small or big like it's giving me money secondly i'm learning some new skills like because i had to handle like eight account managers I didn't take it as like the job where I had to like the order the food or like the scan the papers or like prepare the document. I took it as the job like where I was actually multitasking and like working the tight deadlines, which taught me a lot, a lot of things. And secondly, I took that as an opportunity to like meet new people, like network and within the bank. And third, live in that moment, but keep progressing towards like your goal by taking small, small steps. And be humble, be help people as much as possible in your personal and the professional life. That's what I always believe in. Without keeping any expectations that you will get something in return. Don't keep any expectations. I really want to hear about your natural progression. Walk us through that. You land there. You have a CFA, you're a CFA graduate. What do you do? Did you first apply for CFA equivalent roles or did you automatically think they're not for me yet I need to first start from zero so when I landed in like 2018 in February I had no idea like it's gonna be like very challenging because as you said like you have CFA masters and like the, everything but it's again like it's all in like on paper and the experience was in India so I qualification should be easy for me to get into like the financial services industry and i was trying to target like the capital markets capital markets in canada is very competitive i applied online nothing happened because like in canada or like any other country like it's all the it's all about who you know in the industry so i wasn't like so good at networking so I applied for the jobs, like for all the jobs that like um, required CFA or like masters and like my kind of experience, but no replies, nothing. I was a shy guy, like really, really shy, like an introvert and networking didn't come naturally to me. So the someone gave me the advice, like, why don't you do something like which you have the interest in and maybe there you will meet people and like you will get into something that you want. So I started like, um, I joined this leadership program for the Bruce Trail Club because I love hiking. I started leading the groups on the Bruce Trail. It's one of the largest, um, longest trail in Canada. And there, like in one of the groups, like I've met someone who was an entrepreneur and he introduced me to like someone at BDC, right? And that person, like I was so thankful, like he... So he said like there's an opening, like the contract opening for the client relationship officer, which is like the admin role, the first role in Canada that I got into. And he said like, but like you are overqualified, seem to be overqualified. And I said like, I don't care. Like, I just want to set my foot inside the industry and I'm ready to like go take any step towards that. Like even if it's like starting like really, really small. Because after two, three months, I realized it's not going to be that easy. And I knew like it's a bank and it had like two divisions because I did my research. So like if I start small, I know like I can make like my way up through my attitude and through maybe like meeting new people in the bank. So that's where it happened. Like that person referred me to that admin role. I got the job and they again asked me like, you're overqualified. Like why are you taking this job? And he says, because first of all, like you need me. It's a contract role. Like I know it's very urgent. And secondly, like, I need, like, this job very urgently. And I know, like, it's just a contract role. It's not, like, permanent. So, like, I won't be staying here for long. But it will give me an opportunity to, like, network within the industry and, like, also gain North American experience. And once I got into the role, uh, I remember, like, three weeks into the, that role, like, the VP of, like, the financing of that area, financing division of that area, I got so impressed by the attitude my attitude, like he offered me to become an account manager, which would have like increased my salary by 50%. But I didn't want to be an account manager. I said like, no, like I don't want to be because that's going to be a permanent role. And I don't want to go into a role where I won't feel comfortable. That's not of my interest. So I prefer to be in a contract, like a short-term role where I know like I'll get out of it like 
because like the contract is going to over. It's not because I'm leaving that role because I didn't like it. I rejected that offer and continued doing the admin role. And, and then I just networked within the bank. And then I got like opportunity um, through the, uh, like I networked with one person, the bank like, in that center. And he introduced me in someone like the hiring manager in the advisory uh, division. And like we talked and the interviews happened. It was like one of my worst interview, I'm telling you, in the advisory, like the management consulting at PDC, because I never did the management consulting before, and especially like the case study interviews. And I was so blank, but they still hired me purely on the basis of the feedback that they got from my previous boss, like in the admin role and other colleagues within the bank. I, I love that role too much, but like advisory was never my cup of tea, but I always knew like that role is teaching, giving me a lot of skills that can be transferable to the capital markets. Then I jumped from that advisory to like the control I have. Again, it's purely on the basis of the relationships that I built in the advisory role, like with my bosses and they recommended me to the, they recommended me to my current boss and that's how like she hired me like purely on the basis of like the feedback she received from my last bosses. So that was my journey, like starting small and keep smiling and just accept whatever comes, but be strategic. Everyone that's watching that is planning on moving to another country to work in whatever fields, whether they find something that's aligned with their qualifications or not, it's nice to keep an open mind for opportunities and really focus on networking as early as possible. I have clients who have high qualifications and they want to desperately exit that field because they're no longer fulfilled in there. They want to do something that's completely unrelated, but they're scared of doing that because they don't know anyone they feel like they don't have enough skills and they feel that it's a downgrade essentially from their prestigious current corporate job and so the second takeaway from your story is to keep um, an eye for opportunities wherever they are and be open to learn from any experience that was incredible because that often that fear of a downgrade stops a lot of people from getting out of their comfort zone and pursuing their true passion. And they often stay in what we call this golden cage where they have a very well-paid job and, you know, the prestige that comes along with it, but they're deeply unfulfilled in there. Obviously, if they needed to pay the bills, there's absolutely no shame in that, but oftentimes they really just stay because they're scared of the downgrade. And then the third thing is to be able to show how good you are and promote yourself and your skills inside the company to be able to network that to leverage that first experience once you got the foot in the door for better opportunities that finally align with what you really want that's true and also like i would say uh, in the end never say like you don't have these skills first of all like in any job that you go, it's the attitude first that matters the most. Skills can be learned. So having the right attitude will get you in, will help you survive and like excel in the job. What does it mean to have a great attitude at work? Take time to just like observe, observe their working style, their requirements, and like then adapt accordingly. Taking feedbacks, asking for feedbacks is, I feel like is one of the most important thing because not every, like each one of us, not most, most of us are actually not good at taking like the constructive feedback, but showing that you're being open to like feedback, you're showing that, yeah, you're willing to learn and grow and they will have like eventually will have more confidence in you and just be like, um, I mean, nice like to to your co-workers like nice in the way like you help them whenever they need you don't think like you're done with your work like and that's it like always see find ways like where you can like support your team members and be humble and i guess like the qualities that i mentioned like um attitude like it makes like combination of all that makes you an easy to work with person Again, I I still cannot recover from you sharing that you you've had your CFA graduate, and when you present that to employers, they 
look past it because it's an international qualification. It's not like this niche diploma from this, uh, we don't know country. No, like the CFA is a gold standard in around the world. So tell me more about how you handled that news and if you ever lost hope that you would climb the ladder. In the beginning, yeah, like it feels like what the hell? Like, I mean, I guess like I accepted like and started being more realistic because just imagine like if I'm in India and someone coming from like outside India, I don't know that person's working style. Like I know the people's working style in India, like bit will be a bit more familiar with that than like someone coming from like other country, right? So I may need to somewhat like test that person. Because as I said, like the CFA, masters, like all these, they give you like the technical skills. But in, now in the workplaces, it's the soft skills that matter the most. Is that person like a really good person to work with? Like if I'm working with him or her like for like 10 hours, am I going to love it or like I'm going to hate it? So I understood that like early in the career when I was trying to like uh, when I came to Canada, that it's not just about like the technical skills or what you have it on your resume. It's actually about your personality. That is so powerful. We often focus too much on hard skills. So it's a great reminder for all the viewers that, yes, you have the hard skills. If you don't, if you're switching into another industry because you're following your passion, you want to exit the corporate path, do the research on the hard skills that are required. But if you do have the hard skills, pay attention to your soft skills and network and have them show to whomever you're talking to. And that can make the difference as Ayush explained. Ayush, do you have a last word for us today? Just sum it all. Be humble. Help people wherever you can without any expectations in your mind and believe in yourself. Don't be scared to get out of your comfort zone and you will get there for sure. Thanks for watching this video. I hope Ayush's incredible career story and likable personality left a great impression on you. And if it did, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. See you soon. Bye.